Welcome back. Today we're going to look at MIDIs in Python. And so, what is a MIDI or a MIDI file? Well, it is a musical instrument digital interface and it's used as a way of storing music efficiently. And it very specifically describes how to store music that connects to electric devices rather than, for example, recording a song. And it does this using piano rolls and this is an actual piano roll the idea is that as you play it these bits spin round and they hit the different length strings here to produce different sounds and now digitalized piano rolls look quite similar to this but the idea is still the same and the library for that is per piano roll which is actually a library that I've worked on so I know that it works and I know that it's very nice so to start we actually need to install quite a few things. Uh, if you don't have it already, we need PyDub, PyFluidSynth, so that we can use FluidSynth, PyPianoRoll, SimpleAudio, which is a Windows bug thing, you might not need it on another OS, and SoundFile. And you'll see that everything's already installed. So the first thing is, we're going to import a bunch of stuff from PyPianoRoll. We want read, two pretty MIDI, and a standard track. And you, you'll see why later. Also, gonna, from PyDub, we're going to import an audio segment and playback from matplotlib. Dot by plot, we want PL, the PLT function. We also want sound file as sf and numpy as np. So that's all our imports. And the one other thing I'm going to say is I'm going to say that the sample rate we use is going to be 44 kilohertz and this is just a standard thing. So we're actually going to start by loading this fur release MIDI file and you, you can't see it because it's a series of notes but uh, we'll just read it and see what we get. So we, we get this warning because Pretty MIDI, which is one of the libraries we're using, is very old and uh, is looking at this file and saying, oh, something's wrong. But otherwise we have a multi-track and it's not got a name, it's got 24 re resolution, which means there are 24 time samples per step. It's got a tempo, which is this array uh, saying that the tempo at each time step is this value. A downbeat array, uh, a list of tracks, whether something's a drum, the piano roll, and the program for each track, so this one is not a drum, this one here is also not a drum. And then one of the great things we can actually do with this multi-track is that we can plot it and then we want to plt.show. And you see we get a lot of notes back. So before we plot it, we're just going to look at the first few notes. So what we'll do is we'll say multitrack.trim and we're going to trim it at zero and then 12 times the resolution. So it's only going to have the first 12 notes. And you can kind of see here there are some faint lines, maybe if I make it bigger. You can kind of see that there are some lines there. And we could increase the volume so that the lines are thicker, but uh, that has worked. And you can actually visualize the piano rolls. And that was the equivalent to the picture on the previous slide. So now that we can show it, we might want to play it. And uh, this is where the Pi Piano Roll libraries and the Pretty MIDI libraries 
have a kind of limitation. But what we can do is we can convert it firstly to a MIDI. Then we use Fluid Synth. And we can set the settings. But I always set my SF2 path to this particular sound font. I know the default one is there, but the one I uh, use is very nice. And uh, for a piano, it doesn't make much difference, but for more complex sounds, it does sound a lot better. And then we need to set the sample rate, which is the sample rate. And you'll see that's the default, but we'll need it again later. And uh, we can actually then plot the wave, because what this has given us back is a waveform. There we go. So if you imagine a microphone that's vibrating, it's saying at this particular point in time, obviously the scale on the bottom is steps rather than time. It needs to be at, for example, this position. And then the next time it needs to move to somewhere else. And that's why this looks a lot like the kind of shape that you'd expect to see if you were sampling a sound wave. And so that's our raw audio data, the wave. And so now we want to save that. So we will write to fur elise.wav. The data is our wave and our sample rate is our sample rate. So now we've got this fur elise.wav. And what I can do is I can uh, run a command called douche. And so if I look at furrelease.mid, it tells me that it's eight kilobytes in size. And if I look at the WAV file, which is only the first 12 beats, you can see that that's already humongous, which is one of the advantages of MIDI files is that they're so compressed. But now that we have this WAV file, we can actually play it. Because a MIDI file on its own uh, is difficult to play. You need to first render it to a WAV and then play that. So this is where we generate an audio segment from WAV. And you can say from WAV file, but I'm just going to specify it's a WAV, and that's for elise.wav. And then we can just play segment. You see it plays the first 12 beats so that's quite nice but we're not going to stop there the next thing we should do is we should actually modify the piano roll so next we want a drum beat and our drum beat is numpy zeros and the length the shape is the multi-track dot get max length and it's by 128, and the d-type is numpy.uint8. And to kind of demonstrate that, what I'll do is I'll take the current multi-track, and I'll just print the zeroth track. And you see we have a standard track, which has no name, a zero program. It's not a drum, but it has a shape, which is the length, and then 128, and d-type, uint8. And the reason for this is there are 128 different notes, you can play and so the specific note you pick is a specific sound and then the data type is saying that the volume is also an unsigned integer between 0 and 127. So then what we can do is we say drum beat and we want to turn on some values. So we'll say that we want the down beats and if you remember, if I print the downbeat, you can see that that's another array. And uh, it's not very clear there because it's a series of trues and falses, but it's the length by one because a downbeat is either on or off. You can't have the different nodes. And we'll set that to 30 because that's roughly the volume of the others. And we need to pick an instrument, so I'll pick instrument 40. 
and then we actually need to add that to our multi-track. So we'll append the drum beat, except that uh, we can't, we need to append a track. So we'll just create a drum track. which is a standard track it's a drum and that's going to be the name and it is a drum and the piano roll is a drum beat and the program is zero and uh, now at the end we can write that and save it and it should play with the drum and you see the drum beat plays on the downbeats. So we could then, you know, change, for example, the track it's on. And you see we get a different sound. We could change the volume. Um, if I make it 50, it'll be very loud. And we could even say that if we wanted using the save function, but I'm not going to because I think that the original for at least does sound a lot better. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, learn how to use Pi Piano Roll, which is for creating piano rolls out of MIDI files and vice versa. PyDub, which is in this case used just for playing stuff. Sound file, which is used for saving and uh, also reading WAVs, but uh, we haven't done that. And it's virtually the same if you want to have a look at how exactly it works. And of course, matplotlib and numpy, the two utility libraries, which have their huge uses in many other things as well. So hopefully you can use this to create your own music or play around and do something completely different. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again same time next week. Till then.